while everything is closed, work on things already so that pag nagbukas lahat, you're already running. You're not trying to start to run pa lang. So parang race, you're not starting pa lang. You're already running when, when the gates are open. This time, you already consider it as a period of no sales but you're preparing when it opens that by August, lahat ng kinita ng August will compensate for the losses in April. It would be good to use this time to to study, to innovate. Kasi if you just innovate and pivot for the sake of pivoting, just for the sake of innovating, pero wala ka naman din alam dun, madi malulugi din siya. It would be better that you stick to you, see, you stick to your business, use your cash for your own business also, na alam mo na talaga and slug it out from there than just to innovate for the sake of innovation. Okay guys, for this video, our interview, we flipped everything that she wanted to ask me questions. Okay, so we have Audris Romualdez, CEO of eSports. She's the one responsible for the stadium that you are that you saw in the sea games last year in new clark city so how are you doing during the lockdown madaming disruptions in in other things especially the brick and mortar ones but i'm okay eh. i i said this in different videos that for me kasi the stock market's open so no change in that and i structured everything that i need to do that as long as i have this or i have my laptop everything will everything will run for me but today i want to talk about small businesses which mm. i'm in there is a, such a thing as people saying should we put the company first or should we think of the employees first mm. particularly during this crisis parang should we drain out all our cash mm. and company assets to make sure that your people survive the lockdown and the crisis mm. or should you think about the company and saving it first before the people if you can protect both then that would be amazing pero that's also not realistic because there will come a point in time where if zero income is coming and then your costs are fixed that will be a to the, com the company as well so my answer to that is if i'm given a choice i'll try my best first to retain my people uh, there might be also some haggling that while we're close uh, all of us take a pay cut while we're close baka, uh, we, we, we agree into something that's uh, relatively lesser and then when we recover later on i remember when i was employed nabutan ko rin yung 2008 crash i was with hp hp is a very very large multinational company they all asked us voluntary who wants to get i think it was a five percent or ten percent pay cut the reason why they did that instead of uh, removing people everyone willing to sacrifice portion of their salary so that uh, everyone still stays employed so i think that's mm -hmm. an alternative instead of taking out certain people, everyone still stays and then the company still stays afloat. Some of the big companies have already done this. Yung mga top execs nila, they slash all their salaries lang. Parang konti na lang natira. Their concept is kahit wala naman yung salary namin, we're, we're still okay. Then bawi na lang later on when the company recovers. Uh, that's another alternative. For some naman, I've seen it that their core, the ones that have been there na for a long time, uh, they try to retain it as much as possible. Then the ones that, hindi pa six months also, uh, they really, they're not really regular. Pa rin naman, the company hasn't invested uh, a lot in them and they have a lot of options also should they be out, especially kung fresh grad sila. Another theory kasi behind that is if you retain your core people, once na nagbukas lahat, uh, you, have, you have people to run with. If they're out and then nagbuka, nagbukas, nagbukas lahat, it will be harder also to train and get new people as well. So I, I think that's that's a balancing act. I've seen a lot of people na ganito. Ito yung core business nila ngayon. Since wala talagang pumapasok, inassign niya yung iba niyang tao to do other things that somehow could give them at least a smaller amount of revenue during this period to at least get by to pay for some of, of the other things. And I think may, may wiggle room also for some, for some entrepreneurs. And it depends also on how long the lockdown will last. And it depends also on, on how they negotiate their loans sa banks. I think banks will be more lenient because of what's happening. I also think that some of the establishments kung saan sila nag -re -rent, will also be more lenient also. Yeah, but there's a law already, di ba? Yeah. yeah. Even that you're not going to pay rent during the lockdown. Yeah. 
and and not not, not just that pero if it extends kasi when you say extend when I mean, what is extend after the lockdown uh, people's spending will not be back pa naman eh. so Correct. it would be uh, life as normal it would be spending as normal it would be business as normal or as usual so th- I think that also means that if it's done properly there could be a way to really talk to the landlord the banks and employees kasi yun yung mga fixed costs also eh uh, in order to be financially flexible during this time so either be creative in that or ngayon pa lang while everything is closed work on things already so that pag nagbukas lahat you're already running you're not trying to start to run pa lang so parang race you're not starting pa lang you're already running when when the gates are open this time you already consider it as a period of no sales but you're preparing when it opens that by August lahat ng kinita ng August will compensate for the losses in April so if it's done properly naman uh, the pivot now could mean revenues August, September, October, November that will compensate for yun na walang revenue doon. So, we don't know eh. Uh-huh. Ano, ano, yeah. I'll, give, I'll give you an example and this is so practical kasi kita ng lahat ng tao. Jollibee is close but the pivot of Jollibee is they're now selling frozen chicken joy that you can cook at home na either delivery or you can pick up. So, there's they can still have revenue even though some of their stores are closed. It will not compensate for the lost revenue that they get pero at least yung inventory nila hindi tulog lalo na sa kanila napapanis yun eh so it has to be oh. they're utilizing their uh, drive throughs they're, usil- they're utilizing still their deliveries pero ngay- ngayon they develop another revenue stream also so ganun I think uh, entrepreneurs right now should be creative to utilize the people that they have so that their people could find uh, other opportunities for the business to make money which it may not be the core business of the company right now pero it could be something that will lead into something later on. Kasi wala rin naman, wala rin naman choice eh. The only thing that they could do, you can do right now is really just, I don't know, study and and try to build yeah. on top of it. Kasi this is something naman that people can't control also. What if your business is not as essential as Jollibee? You know, what if it's a specialized segment? Kunyari yung amen, it's gym equipment. It's very expensive or oval tracks and football fields. I mean, these are the things that I hopefully not, but you know, if you're, if the government is transferring funds to other things that are more essential than an oval track, what is your option? Diba? Your case is very, very unique. Eh? Your customers are limited. Unlike other businesses that are not essential, they can still work on something. For your case, I think it's different. It's very, very unique. Eh? Unless you already talk to different cities, municipalities also na gusto mag-engage yan. Pero based on what's happening, feeling ko, uh, that's not in 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 the minds of a lot of people. Yeah, and then the lockdown is going to be lifted siguro per area. Eh? Depende kung sino yung pinaka, ano, di ba? I do my best to limit my costs as much as possible. I have as much cash as I can so that when everything is open, I, I come out running and bawi na lang ako doon. I'll just take this time now. Wala na, wala na talaga. Uh, those current projects, I'll still try to get a feel kung matutuloy pa rin siya o hindi. I'll try to get a pulse already kasi kung hindi, right now, I'm gonna try to find new opportunities also. Either in my core or uh, something else that's not my core anymore. For example, there's a lot of businesses that are B2B. Parang, parang lumalabas B2B rin naman kayo. Uh, some of them, yeah. uh, some of them, nagpipivot ngayon. Since everything is online, they're pivoting and they're marketing their stuff online to retailers. Parang ganon. I don't know yeah, if it's yeah. it. happening to us also. Yeah. Ayun, so I, I think yeah. that's a uh, that's a possible solution also for a lot of a lot of people na magkakaroon ng ng pivot uh, towards certain industries or certain niches that they thought uh, they would never do. But ngayon, you know, since walang choice. Uh, that's where the pivot, pivot will be as well. How many months worth of operations should we have in preparation for our return to normalcy to survive? The time to have prepared cash should have been before this. Eh. So yeah. the best thing that they can do right now is get as much sales as possible, get as much top line as possible so that they get to stay afloat already. It could be a time for them also to maybe get partners in the business that could infuse capital also. For example, hindi naman talaga sila magaling sa marketing, 
maghanap na sila ng partner na magaling na sa marketing na willing mag-infuse ng pera also. So that could be a good way na it's not just an investor but a strategic partner that will enter the business. So they have a choice. Either I lose my equity right now but it gives me a chance to fight and stay afloat or take my chances with a smaller runway pero I still maintain my equity. As long as sales are there, as long as it may not be as projected, it may not be as high as, pero as long as may pumapas, they'll be able to take care of their operations. And the best thing that they can do pa rin is to make their operations as lean as possible. And uh, lahat ng mga travel nawawala yan. Instead na mag-team building here, wala na yun. Instead na mag-meeting tayo dito, wala, wala na rin yun. It will all be voice conference, which is which is also justifiable because of COVID. I think marketing will be slash. They just have to lessen their growth projections instead of opening another store here. Wala na. The, the, the money that's used for that will just stay in, in-house lang. Uh, it will just stay for their current operation. So, if they don't have cash, if they can get tremendous sales in the next few months pagka-open, they'll be okay. If wala talaga, I'll get sales from a, I'll look for a partner. Or if they think they can turn things around still and they're confident with it, wala lang talagang cash, they could get a loan. Kung if things are so bad, baka mas mag-hitit yung mga banks. Sa loans, eh, ganun naman eh. When the economy is good, getting out loans will be easy. When the economy is bad, uh, banks will also tighten. Pero, yeah. Kung as BSP is uh, pumping in money also uh, sa system, uh, it may not be that hard. And ganun ginagawa ng mga governments around the world eh. The central banks have been pumping money also so that hindi magkaroon ng credit crutch. So as long as there's money pumping in, by the central banks, I think it won't be a big of a problem for banks to lend money. Kasi hanggang ngayon, kahit sarado ngayon, may lockdown, banks are still lending money. Oh, I like to have a buffer of at least 12 months. For example, we ended December 2019, di ba? Dapat na-prepare mo na yung cash mo for 2020. For example, it costs me, for example, 12 million to operate everything for a year. January, I earn 6 million. February, I earn 6 million. That's the 12 million. That first two months, I'll set aside already for next year. I won't take anything for everything else for growth or or other things for the year. Everything will go for my next year. So it's hard, especially if the business is big. Pero if they want to navigate and have a good buffer for uh, uncertain times, depending on the scale of business, cash is always king. The bigger the cash position they have, the better. So I don't know if six if six months is is good, is good no kasi madami na ako nakita ngayon 6 months yung cash nila pero kinakabahan sila eh magdedepende yun sa entrepreneur depending on the um, the peace of mind that they want eh so ako ah yung uh, probable I, business na papasok right oh, so yung yung, yung trade off kasi noon when times are good people don't want to have a lot of cash kasi hindi kikita yung pera mas maganda iikot sa business pero they're not thinking about times like this na uh, mas maganda na kahit hindi kumita yung pera pero I have your peace of mind iba yung atake kasi pag may cash ke you're not playing defense you're playing offense mas, na, mas nakakapag-strategize ka if you have that level of cash so it may not be super practical to have uh, a lot of cash lying around pero for me cash is king cash gives the entrepreneur options pero aside from that for me it's not just uh, having enough cash for the business but mm-hmm. uh, the owner itself should have cash for their personal so that yeah. hindi, 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 hindi dapat affected yung personal expenses even if the business is not doing well. Yeah, not everyone thinks like that. Yung iba when businesses are good, expand sa business, tas sa personal life, what ko, bili ng kotse ng ganito, bili, bili to. So, a lot, a lot are not liquid also. Should we consider expanding or changing our products and services to adapt to the times and the, and the effects of this pandemic to our industry? My answer is yes, of course. Uh, yeah. and, pero, pero, uh, the good answer to that is, do they have the skills also to pay for So, that's why I said earlier, yeah. it, it would be good to use this time to to study, to innovate. Because if you just innovate and pivot for the sake of pivoting, just for the sake of innovating, pero wala ka naman din alam din, hindi malulupi din siya. It would be better that you stick to, you see, you stick to your business, use your cash for your own business also, na alam mo na talaga and slug it out from there, than just to innovate for the sake of innovation. Pero pag, in, pag pinag-aralan mo, kasi madami yung opportunities eh. Uh, but after this, madami tao mag-face mask na yan forever. Alcohols will be there forever. Yung mga businesses, yung hygiene, mag-change yan forever. forever. Uh, work from home will be more um, this is where we're seeing that work from home 
actually works eh. A lot of people dati ayaw work from home kasi sinasabi nila hindi magiging productive yung employee ko. It will not work. And ngayon, everyone's forced to work from home. They're actually seeing that it, it works eh, and people are more productive kasi they're not they're not traveling eh. Uh, then, then al- and then ito, itong gamit natin, Zoom app na to, the stock of Zoom is Zooming also. So you will see, you will wow. see this is like this uh, be seen even more. Uh, teleconferencing, anything that can be built on top of the internet will just, uh, I, I think, uh, do better over the next few years. So, ganun. Uh, they, I think uh, if, they're, if they will look for opportunities, it should be something connected to uh, either now. medical, pharmaceutical, hygiene, or something that will allow people to transact online or deliver online. And which is already happening naman. I eh. feeling ko mas na-accelerate lang because of this. Eh. Before this naman, madami ng online groceries. Eh. Pero bakit sila na-highlight ngayon? Kasi wala kang, wala kang choice. Eh. So yeah. they're already for even before even before the crisis. Yung cashless, di ba? Sabi mo the cashless society. And, 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 and not just that, yung transacting mismo physical physical goods. Since people are seeing it that it works, more and more people will use it. That will open new industries. Kasi makita mo for that to happen, kailangan mo ng madaming motorcycle drivers. Kailangan mo ng uh, people who would fix all of the systems together. So, ganun. Do we downsize our operations where we can after pandemic to limit operating expenses? Is it necessary to downsize our operations? It would be best to, if, if they don't have cash, to limit growth. Number two, they have to define which expenses are essential and non-essential, which are the things that uh, as a company, as a business, they can remove muna kasi in, when, when there's no crisis there are some expenses na hindi baka hindi naman it, it's considered essential pero hindi naman kailangan for example bibili ka ng mas mahal na printer when you can get it when you can get this printer naman there are certain things that we spend on uh, that that are part of the expenses of the company but because times are good we, we really don't uh, take a look at it as much also there will be companies that may need to streamline a lot of things and there can there are some expenses also that if they look into it uh may, may matitipid may matitipid pa rin eh. and that's been how companies have been uh pag okay parang ang dali gumastos eh ang dali bumili ng mga bagay eh. and when times are bad they're, they'll be forced to be creative eh. so yeah. for me what's very very important they don't st- downsize for the sake of downsizing they need to know their numbers first they need to know how much do I actually need. If they're still earning more than how much they need, then there, there's no need to downsize. It will always go back to what their numbers are. Uh, the reason why they need to streamline everything is because the numbers do not match. Eh. So it mm-hmm. has to go back to the numbers that they're looking at in the negotiation. Nila. Hmm. What is your ano, view of our business climate during and after the pandemic? Let's say the government is able to uh, contain the virus by end of May. Would it be bleak? Would it be very challenging? Do uh, you really think that a lot of small and micro businesses will be so much affected that 50% of the employment employed people will lose their jobs? I mean, is, is it gonna be like that? I don't know if it's 50%, no, but uh, what I know is, parang all crises, there will always be a sector that will be the most affected. Uh, yung sure ako, as of now, and it's very, very evident, anything connected to tourism, transportation, that's non-essential, uh, will be the most hit. Eh. The fact that uh, PAL already is stopping operations for a month, that's already bil- that's already billions. Eh. Tapos may multiplier effect yeah. yung lahat ng employees na hindi nagre-report sa trabaho, lahat sila, wala rin silang kita. And the, yung multiplier effect nun, some of them might have loans for a car, for a house, baka sila mag-default doon. Some of them also, they normally eat out, di na rin sila kakain sa labas because wala silang trabaho. And if they're going, for example, to 7-Eleven, Jollibee, Max, or whatever, that, kung saan man sila gumagastos dati, they also lose revenue. So, uh, j- just looking at it from, from, from that perspective, it hits consumption. Eh. I think consumption will, uh, this, this is what differentiates the 2008 crisis from this is it hits consumption. It affects how how Filipinos in general would, would spend and 
and that's already a large pa- chunk of our economy. The Philippines is a consumption-driven economy, and if people are not spending or people have reduced income, also it will also limit their spending. So uh, there's a projection that our GDP for the year may be ma- wide range, uh, at mm-hmm. best four percent, at worst zero. Ganon. Oh, and the, and the projection was supposed to be six plus percent. Eh? Yeah. So, ngayon, ano na na? at best four, at worst zero. So it depends on how how things will go. Because another another thing that people need to uh, look at is uh, exports. Uh, since China is closed, mat- yung mga manufacturing natin we also export to China. Since walang demand from that, wala rin sila masyadong may export din dun. So Uh, one of the, our largest exports are electronics, eh? and if, since China is not uh, doing so well, also, yun, it impacts our electronics slash export sector here in the Philippines. So exports, tourism, uh, sure, kasama na rin dyan, since tourism, hotels, restaurants, resorts, since events, conferences, weddings are also expos are also out. Lahat ng gumagawa ng mga booths, lahat ng buong photographer industry, videographer industry, uh, lahat ng hosts, uh, all of the all of those caterers, they're all getting zero right now. Eh. So I think it's 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 very very big, and we even have we haven't even talked about Pogo. Uh, your your cousin talked about Pogo that it will slow down when that happens. Also, uh, it gets it would get hit. But I think uh, one of the biggest advantages for us is if the whole world becomes bad, magtitipid yung mga malalaking companies and more and more people will outsource sa atin. I think that could be an upside also because uh, yun, so nila magtipid eh. uh, They will try to find other areas where they can uh, limit their expenses and I think that will make outsourcing even uh, a bigger thing. And yeah. Push the outsourcing industry here. So, ganun yun. May mga winners, may mga losers. Ganun din na the supermarkets are doing well, the drugstores are doing well. Although they're considered retail, uh, sila, yung, sila, yung, sila yung kumikita. Uh, I don't know if the property uh, the property market will do well kasi investing will be the last thing in people's mind, especially mga large ticket items and things like this. So, yun. So, wala nang build, build, build. And it, it, I think uh, what what people are projecting is what will save nga the economy is the government must must pump infrastructure more. Because you know the budget, the budget, naman, the budget, the budget for that is there. No money. Eh. It's not corporate money and it's not uh, retail money. Panggawan infrastructure. It's it's a budget that's already been set aside set aside before the beginning of the year, eh. and uh, that's untouched. No money. Eh. So. Uh, if the government spending is high and it compensates for it, that could boost also the GDP. That's one of the things that could actually you pang hatak sa economy. If if all of this pagkatapos na yung mga quarantine, build 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 happens, then it would be good. May economists nga nagsabi uh, before na nag full lockdown, the government should be full throttle in build 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 right now. Kasi walang traffic, it would be easier for them to build it. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, Oh nga no, <laughs> dapat. Anyway, so that's it. That's all my questions. Thank you. Okay. Or Thank yeah. You. Parang ako yung parang uh-huh. ako yung merong vlog. <laughs> Thank you very much for being my guest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I hope you guys got a lot from this, especially for those who. It's not just any more micro question. It's also about the macro economy. So I hope you guys got a lot from this. And I hope you learned something from uh, Audrey's questions as well. So that's it for now. I hope I asked the right questions. Yeah. Uh, to everyone watching, I uh, hope this video helps you trade well, trade smart, trade smart. For the next videos, we're gonna talk about her success story. Panasya naging sobrang yaman.